Hi there, honors biologists. This is Ms. Dreesen. In today's set of notes, we will be learning about learning target one, which in a nutshell is all about cell theory. In this video, you'll also learn about the remarkable discovery of microscopic life. So our essential question for today is what are the three tenets, meaning principles, of cell theory and how was the theory developed? Learning target one, you should be able to state the three principles of the cell theory and the scientists that are credited with developing it. So what exactly is a cell? A cell is considered in biology to be the basic unit of life. And what that means is that there's nothing smaller than a single cell that biologists consider to be a living thing. So some organisms that are living things are one single cell, whereas lots of things that we might think of um, off the top of our heads typically are multicellular organisms. The study of cells is called cytology. Um, and this includes people who study the function of cells, the functions of the organelles inside of the cells, different types of cells that exist, uh, the process of cell division, and diseases that relate to cell division or cell function. Uh, for example, um, the study of cancer and how cancer is the, a disease caused by uncontrolled cell division. And there are sometimes diseases that are caused by proteins or things inside of cells that do not work, fun uh, or fu work or function properly. So cytology is a really broad uh, field in biology and it's a very exciting field and continually growing field in biology as we continue to learn more and more about cells and as we develop more advanced technology to study them. So in this next set of notes, we're gonna be talking about who discovered cells and what is cell theory. Let's start with Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke uh, lived from 1635 to 1703 he was an English physicist, so you might think of biology being completely unrelated to physics, but that's not true. Um, a lot of physicists apply what they know about um, physics and math to how we can use that to study life. And he was one of the first scientists to study and record cells, meaning illustrate cells or, or talk about them in writing, and he was using one of the first types of microscopes. He was the first person to use the word cell um, to identify or uh, label microscopic structures. And the reason he thought of the word cell is because he was thinking about the little rooms that uh, monks in monasteries lived in. So he thought these little boxy rooms were similar to the cells that he was looking at, which is why he thought to call them cells. And the types of cells that he was studying at the time that made him think of these little boxy rooms were um, cork. And cork is essentially dead tree cells. It's like the outermost layer of a certain type of tree. And so in his notes he illustrated these dead cork cells and noticed the that there was a, a, a tissue that formed an empty dead box on the inside. So he was seeing through um, everything inside the cell had, had died at that point and broken down. And he was looking at the exterior cell walls of those and that's why he thought little boxy rooms and he thought of monastery cells. Uh, I really want you please watch the this video I'm going to show you. This video is made by HHMI Biointeractive. It is a phenomenal video that talks about Antony von Leeuwenhoek and his discovery of microscopic living things. So please do not skip this part of the video. I really do want you to watch it. I think you'll find it to be really eye-opening and it's just a beautiful illustration and story of the discovery of the first single-celled living organisms. Everything that you can actually see with your eye is just the smallest sliver of life on this earth. Most of life is invisible. We still have this idea that we're the most central feature of earth. And it's the humans that are the bystanders. The microbes are doing the work. What do you als je dingen zie wat niemand ooit heeft gezien? What do you do when you see things that no one has ever seen before? L A Y L E U V E N. They pronounce it with a V. Hook. Leeuwenhoek. 
Anthony van Leeuwenhoek. He was a haberdasher in the city of Delft in the Netherlands. And why his curiosity found an outlet in microscopes that is just lost to history, we really don't know. The quality of his microscope was superb. He made some 500 of these small instruments, and only a few of them he showed to visitors. He never told anyone how he made his lenses. Robert Hooke in England, he wrote this wonderful book, Micrographia. The first observations of the small world with lenses. One of the first things that Leeuwenhoek did was look at things that Hooke had looked at. There was a stinger of a bee, leg, I believe, of a louse, singular of lice. But he saw some things that Hooke didn't see because his lenses were better. It was summertime, it was, it was August. The days are so long that you get a lot of algae growth on water. He called it green clouds. Curious again, he had what he calls a glass vessel, you know, a jar probably, and he filled it with the water. The next day, he put it under his lens, and, and what he saw was green streaks. Among this was all these little animals. And these things were a whole lot smaller, like a thousand times smaller than anything he had ever seen before. And, and I, I think the line is, I confess I could not but wonder at it. <laughs> them in Dutch dierkunst. And dierkunst, that's a uh, diminutive of the word dier. Dier, D-I-E-R. And which is the Dutch word for animal. What Leeuwenhoek called them was little animals. This was all so new. The word microorganism uh, did not exist at the time. The word bacteria is from the 19th century. And, and that strikes me as, as Adam in the Garden of Eden, who in Genesis named all the animals. It was just a brand new world. And, and he was the first person in it. He wrote a letter to the Royal Society, one of the first organizations to practice uh, experimental science. And they're going, oh my heavens, what is this? At first they didn't believe it. Finally, the other members of the Royal Society were also able to see it. And the rest is history. And so he discovered many things. Sperm, red blood cells, protozoa, and bacteria. Which nobody had ever seen before. He is the first person to see everything he looked at for 50 years. Van Leeuwenhoek wanted to see these things. Well, he saw them. But now we get most of life is microbial. If you look at the tree of life, you know, only this tiny little part is every single thing you've seen. Every higher organism is covered, you know, inside and out with bacteria and humans would not be alive if these little 24-7 partners weren't giving us all of these genes and proteins that our own genomes don't encode. And they have all kinds of fabulous behaviors. Vibrio harvii, it's a marine bacterium that looks like a sausage, and it's very fast. Vibrio means vibrate. And what is amazing is that if one watches them go from a single cell to a number of cells, all of the bacteria in unison start glowing in the dark. By studying this bioluminescent organism, we discovered that bacteria can communicate using a molecular language. We used to think that social behaviors were the purview of higher organisms. What we now understand is that bacteria were probably the first organisms on this earth to ever communicate with one another. We're always looking at an unknown world. We're driven by our ignorance, and we're driven by the idea that the world must be more complex than what we understand right now. And that's enough inspiration to do an experiment.
imagine being the first one to see your sperm swimming around. I mean, that'd be a scary thing, right? That <laughs> So let's recap what we've learned about Antony Leeuwenhoek. Antony Leeuwenhoek lived from 1632 to 1723, so around the same time period that Robert Hooke. He was a Dutch inventor, and he specialized in textiles or fabrics. And you might wonder, what is the relationship between looking at living things and um, being a textile merchant? Well, he used his microscopes to study the quality of the fabrics that he sold, and he thought, well, why don't I use this, this technology to look at um, the things in the world around me. So he is uh, kind of famously known in biology as the father of microbiology, which means the, the study of li little tiny living things. And so he built better and better microscopes and he um, kept that as a closely guarded secret because it helped him sell his products and help him remain infamous in the community. So he was the first person to observe and describe microorganisms, which are the small single-celled living organisms, and he first discovered them in pond water. He was also the first person to observe and describe muscle fibers, bacteria, sperm, and blood flow. Pretty cool. This is a, a couple of sketches that he did in one of his books. Again, some of these are the organisms that he found in the pond water which hopefully we might get to see at some point this year if we get to come back from, from distance learning. Matthias Schlieden, uh, he studied from 1804 to 1881. He was a German botanist, which means that he focused in his study on plants. He was He's considered co-founder of the cell theory because he proposed that all plant tissues are composed of cells. So he was dissecting plants, he was cutting them into tiny cross sections and looking at them under microscopes, and he realized that every single plant he looked at had the same basic structure, and that bas basic structure that he discovered was essentially the cell, um, which made him think of the other um, uh, scientists he had learned about before him, including Robert Hooke and Antony Leeuwenhoek, and so he recognized that these cells are the building blocks of every single type of plant he looked at. So he wrote a bunch of papers um, basically saying that if we were to establish a set of rules of what determines life, um, I propose that plants are all made of these building blocks called cells. Uh, Theodore Schwann was studying at the exact same time that Matthias Schlieden was, and in fact they collaborated and they shared resources and talked um, via letter. And Theodor Schwann uh, was a German physiologist. He was a human doctor. And he was also co-founder of the cell theory because he recognized that in his work related to the human body that he noticed that also humans and other types of animals are made of cells as well. And so he expanded upon Schlieden's um, principle that not only are all plants built of cells, but so are all animals. Cool fact, he was the first person to isolate an enzyme from an animal tissue, because we just ended our discussion in learning about enzymes. He was the first person to identify and isolate enzymes, which was pepsin, the, the specific type of enzymes found in the, in the stomach. Pretty cool. Anyway, all right, Rudolf Virchow uh, was again studying around the same time, 1821 to 1902. He was also a German doctor. He was primarily focused on studying how do cells divide and how does cell division lead to disease. He is cited as the first person to recognize cancer cells, which we will again come back to in one of our later units to learn about the relationship between what is cancer and how does it relate to the process of cell division. And he was the first person to kind of recognize the relationship between this disease and how it is caused by cell division. And he also was the first person to name and describe leukemia which is a type of cancer of the blood. And so in his studying, um, you know, he's reading about the work by Theodor Schwann and by Matthias Schleiden, and he essentially realized, well, if we were, if we were to formulate a set of principles that identified um, the, the theory of cells, we need to understand where cells come from. And he recognized that new cells need or have been coming from pre-existing cells. So every new cell that we see is the result of a process of cell division. Um, for you, I challenge you to think about, um, there's a big question 
that I hope you get that this leads to, you know, if all cells come from pre-existing cells, what big question would that make you ask? I hope you recognize that that might make you ask the question, well, where did the first cell come from? Uh, and that's a question I hope that we will get to later this year. So I'm going to make you uh, sit on that one unless you want to do some independent research. Um, but new cells do come from pre-existing cells, and eventually we will hopefully talk about where the first cells arose. All right, so let's summarize the discoveries in a nutshell. Uh, the first principle by Schleiden, all plants are made of one or more cells. Schwann added on to that, recognizing that all animals are made of one or more cells. And then Virchow, new cells come from pre-existing cells or previous cells. So if you were to summarize those in a nutshell, that's what they discovered. And that helped influence our current or modern day theory of cells. Memory tip. Um, so you will be asked to recall and memorize these different scientists and their discoveries. And if you were to write their names in alphabetical order, you've got Schleiden, Schwann, Virchow. That is also in chronological order. So if you can think of, well, we start with plants and then animals and then cell division, then you can match those discoveries to their scientists quite easily. So think about it in terms of starting simple with plants and then animals and then cell division. Write it alphabetically and you've got, you can match those names and the scientists. So I encourage you to write down that memory tip because you will be expected to memorize these. There's also a Quizlet set to help you study these. All right, so if we were to summarize what is modern day cell theory, all living things are made of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of structure and function of all living things. Um, meaning they are the building blocks of all living things, and there's nothing smaller than a cell that is considered to be alive. And lastly, uh, new cells come from pre-existing cells through the process of cell division. All right, so um, quick quiz. Let's see how you do. All right, so here's a little quiz for you. I want you to read through each of these statements, and I want you to select three statements that you think are the ones that summarize cell theory. So I want you to pause the video, read through your options, and circle the three that you think are the right answers. All right, let's check your work. Hopefully you recognize that um, statements three, five, and eight are the three statements that summarize the three principles of cell theory. That is three, all living things are made of one or more cells. Five, new cells come from pre-existing cells. And eight, the cell is the smallest unit of life. All right. Next, please match the scientists to their contribution. So see if you can figure out who did what. Pause the video. Do your best guesses uh, based on what you've written down. Try to do it from memory if you can. And then, uh, re uh, then pl play the video and then check your answers. So pause. All right, let's see how you did. So Robert Hooke uh, would be matched to E. He was the first person to study and record cells using a microscope. He coined the word cell. Anthony Lewinhook, that would be C. He was the first person to observe microscopic organisms in pond water, which he called animalcules. I didn't mention that earlier. I should have. Um, animalcules was what he coined as the microscopic single-celled living organisms. Um, if you watched the little video, you would have caught that. Uh, next. Matthias Schleiden was B. He proposed that all plant tissues are made of cells, and cells are the building blocks of plants. Theodor Schwann is A. He proposed that all plant and animal tissues are made of cells, and cells are the building blocks of all plants and animals. And last but certainly not least is Rudolf Virchow D. He proposed that all cells come from pre-existing cells. All right, this is all I have for you in this set of notes. If you have questions, shoot me a message. Um, otherwise, make sure that you practice the Quizlet set that goes with the set of notes. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.